Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Okay, I want to further prove what I'm saying in my last video. My last video, which is um, the one I just did, which is, what did I name it? I called it um, The Birthright. Okay, listen to this. Galatians 4. I desire to, this is verse 20, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me that ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. Remember, Abraham represents God the Father. He had two sons, okay? One by the bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was born of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he after the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory. For these are two covenants, one from the Mount Sinai, which gen gendereth to bondage, which is the law, which, which is Agar or Hagar, the bondwoman. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Think about it, Mount Sinai in Arabia. Arabia, the home of Mecca, Islam, the firstborn of the bondwoman, which is the law, bondage for the woman. We know that Muslims, the Muslim faith does not look kindly on women particularly, and in fact wants to destroy them if they had their way, which absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. However, this is what the, this is the way the Antichrist spirit thinks. Okay? For Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, which is law and bondage. It is hierarchy. It is Illuminati. It is Antichrist. And the, so let's continue with verse 25. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answers to Jerusalem, which is now is and is in bondage with her children. Think about it now. Jerusalem <laughs> is in bondage to Mount Sinai. They're in bondage to the Muslims. They don't even have control of their temple mount. And you have the Muslims even now having a fit, killing people because they're afraid of losing the temple mount. What are they really afraid of? This is actually a spiritual battle going on here. The, the flesh is worn with the spirit. Whatever you see going on in the, in the physical realm, you can be guaranteed that it's going on in the spiritual realm. What's happening is that Satan knows he's losing control of the bride being, um, getting, she's getting ready to be raptured. The bride is getting ready to be removed. And he's going to lose control of Jerusalem here on earth because the spiritual um, bride, the spiritual Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem is getting ready to receive her bride. So Satan is having a fit. And he's, that's why there you see this physical manifestation of, of the Muslims who control the Temple Mount and they are having a fit because they're afraid of losing the Temple Mount. Because in the spiritual realm, that's what's getting ready to happen. Think, this, is the legal, this is legality. I always think, why did, the, why did Israel, why did the Jewish people give back the Temple Mount when they had control of it? They gave it to the Muslims because they're still in bondage. That's why legality is here. God works in legalities. So does Satan because he cannot break the law. Although he tries, he is bound by the laws of God. He's bound by the laws of God. So he tries to work around it with lies and deceptions. But here it says that they, the Jewish people are in bondage. <laughs> bondage because they are in bondage with the, tr the children of Arabia. So the, the slave woman. And for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and enters to Jerusalem, which now is and is, is in bondage with her children. Okay. But Jerusalem, which is a, is a, a but this is 20, verse 26, but Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. The Holy Spirit is the mother of us all. We are born again when we get baptized in the waters. We are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and we are born again by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. She is the Jerusalem of above. She is the free woman. Now let's continue in verse 27 of Galatians 4. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that beareth not. Break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath has, hath an husband. 
Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as them he was born of after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. So it is saying that um, Ishmael tormented Isaac because he was born of the free woman. He was born of the slave woman. He was a servant of the servant's seed. And therefore, he tormented the free woman's child. The same thing Satan and his, his uh, followers torment Jesus Christ because he was born of the free woman. Sarah represents the free woman, the Holy Spirit. We are also born of the free woman. The free woman, the Holy Spirit, now has many, 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 many children. When you are born in the waters of baptism, the Holy Spirit now has many children, not just one son. She has many, many children, both, both men and women, who were born into the, into the family of God. This is important and major stuff here, people. So let's continue. Um, uh, <clears throat> nevertheless, uh, verse 30 um, Nevertheless, what, what saith the scripture? So we all also want to point out the Muslims who are born of the seed of, of the, the, the flesh of, of the bondswoman is in great envy and jealousy over Israel. They're, they're in so much jealousy. They want the birthright. They want the, they want the inheritance. They want to inherit that little teeny weeny bit of a little bit of land. They got all that land. They have all that surrounding land that the Lord gave them. And they're not satisfied. They want that little piece of ground that the Jews have. They want that birthright. They want the whole thing. They are not satisfied until they possess everything. Um, so, but this is this is what this is what he this is what the Lord says about that. Uh, <clears throat> verse thirty. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. We are born of the Holy Spirit. We are not born of the bondwoman. We are not born of, we do not have the serpent seed. When you are born again by the waters of baptism, you have been changed and adopted into the family of God. Your DNA has been changed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you are no longer part of the bondwoman's inheritance, which is to be cast out. Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heirs with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but we, but of the free. I think that made my point from the last video. If you had any doubts about what I was saying before, this should clear up that mess. Okay, let's go back to the book of uh, Numbers here. Just for a second, I want to clear up a couple of things. Numbers chapter 19. Um, when it talks about the red heifer, I believe that this is uh, referring to the bride of Christ, but I also believe it's also referring to the Holy Spirit. The red, the red heifer is the, the, the one who was sacrificed for us. Basically, basically when Jesus Christ died, it allowed um, and died and buried and was rose, rose again on the third day. And then um, it was 40 days after his resurrection uh, or 50 days after his resurrection on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down and dwells with, dwells with man and begins to change our process, it changes, cleanses, and um, um, sets us free. So this is what I believe it, this, the red heifer is actually referring to here in this. Take, you shall take her blood, um, take her blood of his finger and sprinkle her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And as we know in the church, um, in the book of Revelation, the number seven refers to the bride who actually is in imitation of the Holy Spirit. Because we see the seven spirits before the throne of God, these flames of fire that represent the Holy Spirit, the seven um, virtues, if you will, of the Holy Spirit. We are also, as the church, represent that, that Holy Spirit because we are the bride of Christ. We are the new Jerusalem. The Jerusalem which is above is the Holy Spirit. We are the new Jerusalem. We are the bride of Christ. Um, therefore, when you she, she's burnt up, the, you should put cedar, take cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet. Um, scarlet representing the blood. What cedar wood represents um, incense, prayers, intercessions, 
Hisab means the cleansing, um, sanctification. So sanctification can, this is what happens when you receive the, the cleansing of the red heifer. Um, and the red, heifer, the red ashes of the red heifer are taken and they're used for cleansing of the priests and for the temple and anybody who touches anything dead, anything dead, he uses the, um, the, uh, the ashes of the red heifer to bathe in. Now, think about this for a second. This is what came to me after I made my last video, was that um, um, these waters of separation that's talked about in verse 13 and verse 19, uh, verse 20, these waters of separation. And uh, what was coming to me now, let me just see if I can collect my thoughts here. Oh, about death. Okay, so if you don't, if you're unclean, basically it's talking about death here. If you touch anything that's unclean or dead, you are unclean for seven days. Now think about the seven days as being the seven year tribulation or the 7,000 years of mankind. <laughs> you are not going to be raised again in, unless you go through the waters of purification, which is baptism, which represents cleaning, cleansing of the, the blood of Christ Jesus and receiving the indwelling of the Holy Spirit so that you can be sanctified, sanctified so that you can be, so you can be presented in the temple. If you can't, um, if, because if you don't take the, the, the ashes of the red heifer and bathe in the ashes of the red heifer, you cannot um, present yourself into the temple for a whole seven days, which represents the, the seven year, uh, the 7,000 years of mankind. You will not be allowed to be resurrected, which you see at the end of the millennium, which is the 7,000 years. After the end of the 7,000 years, you are not permitted that's when you. That's when the second resurrection occurs. So this is what that represents when uh, when it says that you have you're going to be unclean for seven days if you touch anything that's dead. When eating that fruit in the garden was a dead fruit. It was a, a seed of Satan. It made it killed mankind. The day that they ate of it, it killed something in their spirit because it they brought in this bad fruit. It it changed their DNA. It gave them the seed of the serpent, the seed of the, the, the servant, and altered their family seed, the family thinking, the family DNA, um, and changed them on the inside. Therefore, something inside of them died. This, this God um, likeness was changed the moment they ate the bad fruit. It was dead. It was dead fruit. It was dead, so therefore they were unclean. Therefore, though anyone who is not cleansed by the red heifer in the waters of baptism, cannot enter into the, into the temple until after 7,000, the seven days of uncleanliness, which the seven days represent 1,000 days, a one day represents 1,000 years. So that, therefore, they will not be resurrected, cannot be resurrected until after the 7,000 years. That's what that represents. All of a sudden, it occurred to me when I finished the video, I went, oh, that's what it means. Hello. <laughs> See, God is keep giving me these revelations. How? Um, uh, let's just read first here. Um, let me just show you what I mean. Um, da, 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 da. And the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and the seventh day. And on the seventh day, he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe in water and shall be clean at even. Uh, but the man that shall be unclean shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation because he hath defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The, waters of, the water of separation hath not been sprinkled on him. He is unclean. Um, and, oh, let's go back further. Uh, actually, it's not where I wanted to read. Um, this is the law. When a man dieth in a tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. So, if you touch anything that's unclean, you will be unclean for the whole seven days, unless you are cleansed by the uh, um, um, ritual bath of the red heifer, which is the waters of baptism, immersion. You're cleansed in the Old Testament law. That makes you clean after a few hours. By the evening time, you are clean, and therefore you can come back into the temple. Therefore, this represents, like I said before, the seven days represents those who are not ritually cleaned by the red heifer and the waters of baptism, or bathed in the waters of baptism, cleansed and washed. You cannot enter into the temple until those seven days are complete. Those seven days represents 
One, one, a day is, um, a thousand years is a day to the Lord. Okay, so that means after the 7,000 year reign. I think I made that pretty clear. So anyway, I think this is going to be a short video. I still have more to say. Um, I will talk to you later in my next video. God bless.